One day I was sent to meet Michael and Sharon Gravel. The Gravels were looking for someone to be there on either Saturday or Sunday most of the day so they could go out as a couple. The only time I ever saw the kids was when I first came into the house. Sharon sternly instructed all the children to go outside. A little later, one of the boys came to the screen door crying, holding himself. Sharon said, no, you little monkey. You should have gone to the bathroom before you went outside. He came in the house and went to the bathroom. And when he was done, he came out and she said, go upstairs and lock yourself in your cage until tomorrow afternoon. That's the first time I ever heard the word cage. Sharon referred to all the 11 children as monkeys. I thought that it was racist. I was appalled. Michael looked me right dead in the eyes and said, I consider myself to be Moses, leading these children to the promised land. Michael explained to me outside that sometimes the kids try to get out of their cages, and he pointed at the speakers that were on the outside of the house. He told me the doors on the cages were hooked up to the sirens so that they would know when they were trying to get out. He told me a good way to look at the kids to see if they are trying to get out is their fingers will be cut from trying to pry the chicken wire away from the wood. When Michael said that to me, I thought these children are being raised by monsters. I felt that they were treating these kids as less than animals. I never saw the cages that day, but after Michael and Sharon both mentioned and described them to me, I knew what was going on. Knowing how these children are being abused in this house, it was very hard for me to leave. I got in my car and I was driving away from those kids and I had to pull over to the side of the road and I literally sobbed for their welfare. I immediately told my bosses at the caregiving company what I had witnessed. I got called into a meeting with Child Protective Services. They had me write down everything I saw and everything I witnessed. Unfortunately, nothing happened. There was absolute silence. I never stopped thinking about those kids. Three years passed before I got a call from Child Protective Services. The social worker found the notes that I had written at the meeting that we had had three years prior, and the next time I knew anything at all, Michael and Sharon had been arrested. Sharon and Michael received two years behind bars. I wish that they would have been put away for life. I don't personally know the kids. I don't think they know who I am. But what I want them to know is I love each and every one of them, and I'm happy if they're happy.